Hello and welcome to this edition of the MyLabs Trackside training videos. Settings for transponder scoring. In this session I will show you how to prepare for scoring with transponders in MyLabs Trackside. You should watch the video for managing transponder IDs before watching this video. You should also already have experience in Trackside with such things as setting up an event, signing up racers, creating a race order, and all the manual scoring functions. In order to keep this video from being too long, I'm only going to cover the initial computer settings that you need to check before using transponders. There will be other videos to follow which will cover more scoring features in the software. You should always start out by checking your PC clock. Make sure the PC clock is set correctly with the time and that the date format is correct. For transponder scoring, you need your date format to be set to month, day, year. Most likely the date time format is already set correctly. But if you're outside the United States, most likely it is not. Be sure that the format is set as you see it here. If you need to change it, click on the date, change date time settings, change date and time, change calendar settings, and here you're going to set it to month, day, year. I'm now going to open the MyLabs trackside software so we can set the preferences that pertain to transponder scoring. From the menu transponder, click Preferences. Here we see the default number of seconds for the first lap. This value is used by Trackside to estimate what time the gate dropped for that race. Since it is common to start one race while the previous race is still on the track, Trackside can calculate when that gate dropped based on when the leader on lap one crosses the finish line loop. The setting here should be set to about the average time it takes a racer to make one lap. I will explain more on this value when it comes up during scoring. For our training, I'm just going to set this to 60 seconds. The next value to set is minimum lap time. This value is used to alert you if a racer should have a lap time shorter than the value you set here. For instance, if you are scoring at a track where your fastest racer records a 2 minute and 10 second lap time, you could set this value to 120 seconds. If any racer records a lap time of 120 seconds or faster, you will be alerted so that you can verify if it was a true lap or not. If a racer were to complete a lap in less than the time set here, the lap time will automatically get tossed away and not counted. So be sure this value is set as high as possible, yet not so high that a legitimate lap is recorded. Also keep in mind if you shorten your track for your smaller classes such as a 50cc, the lap may be shorter than the big bikes. If you ever have this time set wrong and you need to correct it, you can correct it at any time even after the race is completed. For training, I'm just going to set this to 10 seconds. The used DNF rule is most commonly used at AMA sanctioned events. The transponder can automatically detect whether or not the racer should be scored a did not finish. A did not finish states the racer must do half the laps of the leader and must cross the finish line while the checkered flag is flying. If the racer has not done both, then the, score, the racer will be scored a DNF if you set this to yes. Show hour in lap time setting is normally not used for motocross. If you are using trackside for Grand Prix or Hair Scramble events, you may need to show the hour. The rule is this. If a race can last longer than 60 minutes, you should show the hour. Otherwise, you should not. In motocross, most races just last 10 to 15 minutes, so you would not show the hour. The next setting, default beep from PC on detection. In a perfect setup, your decoder will be sitting right beside your PC. And since the decoder can transmit a beep with an attached speaker, then there is no need for your PC to transmit a beep every time it processes a scan. I would only turn this on if I had to set up my PC and my decoder in separate locations and I was not able to hear the speaker on the decoder transmit a beep when a passing is detected. The final setting and one of the most important settings is the default file save location. This is the location where you want the scoring computer to save scans from a race. Keep in mind that all transponder scans are saved to a text file. When the race is complete, 
you use that text file to import into the database and score the race. This is the location where that text file is to be saved. You must make sure that this folder structure does exist. My preference is to create a folder under trackside folder called scans. Once you create that folder, let all your scans go to that folder. Then whenever it's time to clean it out and the race is all done, you can clean that out of the scans folder and move them to other folders or delete the files. Keep in mind that the preferences we set here are unique for each PC. If you have multiple PCs in your network, you should set the preferences to be the same so that you don't have one computer performing the timing a different way than the other computer. To close out of this and to save our settings, we will click OK. That concludes the training session for Settings for Transponder Scoring. You can find more training sessions online at mxtransponder.com.